All right, we talk about parents teaching their kids. Well, during this whole pandemic, parents are also focusing on keeping their kids safe and healthy. Well, pediatrician Dr. Rishma Chan from Northridge is here. She's got some answers to the issues that many families are struggling with right now. Doctor, thanks for being with us. To start off. My absolute pleasure. Oh, thank thanks. you. Now, you know, we know that kids can get the coronavirus, but how does the virus seem to affect them uh, differently than adults? So we know that kids can be affected with the coronavirus, that we know, but the numbers aren't as large as the ones in, uh, out in the adult population. Um, it could be that kids aren't getting as sick um, as our adult counterparts, or and then they're not being tested. So that's another reason that the coronavirus numbers are less than they are in adults. Um, but most, but we do know that the severity of illness is less in kids overall. The, some pediatricians are offering televisiting, virtual visits during this whole pandemic. Which patients, if any, should do that, should use the, the iPad or the telephone? Telemedicine visits have been very helpful, especially in this situation, right? So if you have just general questions or have mild illnesses, you don't want to expose yourself to other people who might have the coronavirus. Um, and so in that way, it's been very helpful. It's helpful for if you have mild symptoms, and those mild symptoms could be anything from just like a runny nose or maybe even a fever. Um, and there's other reasons that cause runny nose and fever, remember? There's other viruses out there. So you're keeping yourself separated from those patients that potentially have coronavirus. So they could be, you could keep yourself from going to the ER or the doctor's office where you can potentially get sick there. So it's helpful in that case. Um, it's also help to, helpful to have general answers uh, uh, questions answered by your pediatrician. So there's a lot of times you don't need to come to see the pediatrician. A pediatrician can see you just like how you and I are talking right now and talk to you and talk to you about your symptoms or even look at your child to see how well they're doing and then direct you to come into the ER or not. Probably. And so it's important to know, sorry to interrupt you, go on Pat. No, no uh, Dr. Chan, <laughs> I want you to finish your, your sentence. But it's important to note, if you're having severe symptoms such as respiratory distress, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, you know, lethargy, or you're not urinating, other severe symptoms, it's important that you do seek medical attention um, and go into the emergency room. Um, but try to give your facility, healthcare facility, a heads up that you are coming in so they can prepare um, before you come in. And that way, um, you know, you're not exposing yourself to other people. That makes a lot of sense. Now, you know, so many parents are wondering about this. They have kids at home, whether it's one or two or three, but they're wondering how they can keep the kids safe while they're out of school. Do they still have play days? Do they go to the playground? Who should they stay away from? That is a great question. And, you know, I've been asked this so many times. I wish there was a straightforward answer, but to be on the safe side as we're practicing social distancing, you want to, I would say no to the indoor play dates. Um, and first, few reasons, right? You're, every time you're meeting somebody new, you're exposing yourself to other people. And the reason I say it in that context is because you can still be normal without any symptoms and still potentially have the coronavirus. And so you're exposing yourself to other people. And so anytime you introduce a new person into your social distancing atmosphere, you're potentially getting somebody else sick or they're getting you sick. So for indoor play dates, I would mm. say no. Um, for Play dates at the park, we're learning more and more data as it's coming in. We're kind of analyzing it and giving advice. So what we know now is that the virus is living on um, surfaces, steel, plastic, and it's living for hours. And so if you're going to the park and playing on all the equipment there, there could be coronavirus that's over there and you can be exposing yourself and touching your face and getting sick. Mm -hmm. And so I would say no to play dates. If you're gonna be running around outside, and not in close contact with each other, I would say that should be okay if you really must do a play date. Wow, Dr. Rishma Chan, thank you so much for the wisdom and all the answers. I know a lot of parents out there, Pat, and grandparents. Yeah. Oh, I've been writing things down. You too, we've, yeah. we've been listening, Dr. Chan. And seriously. also, yeah, oh, thank you so much. I also must add, if you're trying to keep your kids safe during this time, it can be anxiety provoking, right? It's for yeah. anxiety provoking for adults and for kids, they might not be able to communicate with you. So you want to listen to, like, look at subtle signs. They might be clingy, cranky, mm -hmm. not be able to sleep well. And, you know, just you want to kind of talk to them, reassure them, let them know that there are people who are very smart and are out there with the CDC and so forth. Are All They're right. looking out for our best interests, and they're going to be helping us out. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Chan. Yeah, so many sesame street. Good okay. characters out there. Right. Tell them that. Thank you.